Hi, this is Mad Cat. And this is Wayne. And join us today on Dark Souls 2 Then and Now, where we will be looking at the Shrine of Amana, aka Don't Be a Fool, Use a Bow. <laughs> That's a pretty good tagline for it. You know, just, just imagine like like Zelda 1 with, with the old man. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this and handing you a longbow or a crossbow. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we, we were picking up from the, if you remember, the big lift at the end of uh, Drangleic Castle, or King's Passage, I guess more properly, then this is where we're at now. It just goes straight to the uh, Shrine of Amana, which is a really interesting area. It kind of reminds me of the, you know, the the Great Hollow and, you know, you know basically walk, walk, learning Ash around like inside the... Yeah, yeah. And yeah, this bit is very much like a bit Great Hollow-y. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think this is one of the more beautiful zones in the game. Oh yeah, it, it's yeah, it's gorgeous. I think both of the, we, I think both of us have some footage of just you know pulling out the uh, the binoculars and looking up at the the skybox and yeah, like out here on the water and stuff like that. Yeah, okay, you can see more or less the entire level from this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they gated off with having uh, you pass the segments of deep water in addition that'll just kill you in addition to the shallow ones that you actually have to have to uh, traverse and you really feel the lack of the rusted iron ring in uh, dark souls yeah. 2 in some of these parts <laughs> so much but uh there's there's an interesting gimmick in this area as well to do with the the deep water and mm -hmm. one of the monsters in the area but we'll go to it once we start seeing it yeah yeah yeah, that's that, that's a, a different one. That's an interesting one too, because it almost gets me killed when uh, when it happens. <laughs> we have our first difference right here. Uh, I just have a straight shot to the treasure chest around the corner here with one of those little like mushroom with one of the parasects uh, in here. Whereas, oh, gonna take a second to admire the admire the scenery. <laughs> admire the scenery, very important. Very important. There we go. Yeah, Whereas. That's me. I've got a, one of these dragon scholar dudes, who's dragon also, priests. Who's also just admiring the view, apparently, until you ran up and killed him. <laughs> I don't. I haven't actually killed him at that point. I've just knocked him off the cliff. And instead mm. of a parasect, I've got a basilisk. Right. I guess reinforcing the whole, uh, you know, Great Hollow stuff. And uh, dark bolts don't go through boxes, apparently. I, I, you got to admire the guy. Little physically enabled, physics enabled boxes. Right. I get clearly, I guess the the poor Bastos thought he was in. Uh, he was playing Mass Effect too, and ducked behind his cover. But without a ranged weapon of his own, it just wasn't going to happen. <laughs> Although it's it's kind of funny. I, I actually did um, I did some some footage uh, for for later on after near the end of Aldia's uh, keep, uh, tracking down an enemy that pops up in uh, Brightstone Cove, and I actually did get petrified there because I got stunlocked by a spell while that Bastos was breathing on me. So it's like, darn it. Darn <laughs> so, yeah, it. Whoops. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't, don't ignore them, kids. You know, it's like that. It, you, they, it covers a huge area, and it lingers after you kill the basilisk. So it is very easy to get yourself uh, petrified if you don't have the uh, the petrify resistance on your gear. And most they're, the... ba they're mm. back in Dark Souls 3, and they're a lot more dangerous because they've given up their physical attacks. They now mm. just breathe gas again. Right, right. Gotcha. Yeah, that's kind of a... It's kind of an, a, a trade-off too, because yeah, they, they in fact they had that knockdown on their on their uh, their jump attacks and stuff. And here's the other type of enemy we'll be running into here. These little lurkers under the water, and you may have noticed the uh, sparkles above them. Mm -hmm. It's basically the sparkles are magic that's keeping them asleep. Mm, um, yeah. You can probably hear the singing at this point. Mm. And the singing is what's keeping them asleep, and we're going to find out about that once we go into the little hut. Right. Yeah, this is one of those times I feel kind of bad about talking over the talking over the show because yeah, it's just yeah, the visuals are great and the and the auditory aspect of the level is great too. Where you'll, you'll won't hear. We, won't we shut up whilst you get the glowy? Right there we go. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I guess that's why, why what threw me off too is that I have an enemy actually there, whereas I guess you don't. It was the one that you knocked down from uh, the upper level. Yeah. So yeah, so these these little underwater lurkers, they're they're passive unless you get too close, or mm -hmm. um, well, I 
I meant to show off the trick, but I can't remember what. But basically, their thing is, they don't like f- if you if you like f- like a torch, mm-hmm. they all wake up and they beeline for you. Right. Whereas when they're asleep, they don't really do anything until you get too close. Right. And and even yeah, those two have activated, but you can just spot them by the wake. And the reason right. you might want to light a torch is that it lets you see where the deep water is a lot better. Otherwise, exactly. you do this a very cautious camera down thing. Right. And yeah, later on, we'll have we'll be dealing with uh, with kind of infamous ranged enemies, and you do not want to have the camera pointed away from from the from what's going on in the distance. <laughs> Yeah, these guys are. I, I kind. Of, I, I guess they're kind of like. Uh, they kind of reminded me of like more lizardy versions of the, of the mole men from, from uh, uh, Dark Souls One, but I, I don't. I'm not sure what exactly they're supposed to be. I mean, we both have the art book, but it's kind of. Eh. <laughs> so this is the singer. We knew mm. you were coming. <laughs> yeah, the uh, singing. The Mufanito are kind of. It, it's like they're they're. They won't really do much in the in the game, although the, the lore implications are are uh, are pretty you know, pretty staggering. It's like you know, how do they tie in with you know, Nito and then and the dead and all that? And we'll run into another offshoot of I guess another race you know, that look human but but aren't. As we always have. I'm I'm not sure if you know if these are actually a race or if they you know a little cult or something. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Agdane uh, refers to uh, you know, kind of kind of derisively refers to you as a human. Kind of yeah, no, Agdane not. I think is a sir, is. But I'm talking about the, the Milfinito, so I don't oh, yeah. know if you know, could, you know what, what their deal is. If they're sort of a separate people, right, right. Or if they're a little cult thing, you know, outside. brought yeah, it, it up to sing. For we will never leave. They, they definitely do sound like a little, like yeah, like like a cult, you know, not not able to leave, and you know, not, heck, can't, they have nothing in their lives beyond this one, beyond this one uh, task. It's a very useful task for us, you know, causing those firefly thingies to keep the uh, keep the uh, the hollow lizard people sedated. But <laughs> well, one really cool uh, thing too is that while you're while you're approaching her, and at least like focused on you, she stops singing. And you'll hear the, the, the like the music will will stop in the audio track, and yeah, the those little firefly thingies will disappear, and that makes all of the uh, all of those hollow critters uh, active until she starts singing again. So that's another that's another really cool thing about how the the cues of you know the of you know what's going on in the level, you know can can you know, give you give you advance warning about what you're about to deal with. And the curse pots are back. And if you're, uh, you know, we're kind of curious about the, the the two swords, I, the two weapons I was using, and the icon on there, I decided to try out a little bit of a gimmick here, and make my uh, get a the bandit knife, which you might remember from the iron iron keep video, uh, and the uh, falchion, which I uh, infuse with bleed. So we're gonna go ahead and try out a bleed build. The idea being use a stone ring, try to stun lock the enemies, uh, build up a combo and bleed them, and then finish them off that way. And then hopefully with the, their stamina penalty from bleed, they won't be able to combo me to death, which is a big threat from dealing with the the, the uh, Archdrake uh, guys. So mixed, mixed results on that one. <laughs> mixed results. I was actually going to ask oh. about your hat. <laughs> do you like my do you like my fashion souls here you know uh yeah i decided to go with the the skeleton lord uh, equipment for the most part and then yeah that is the black uh, hollow hood that you get a, as a drop from the the female uh, necromancers in huntsman's coats uh, I, I farmed them for I farmed them many many times for the lizard staff and i got two or three other hats to drop too so i figured hey you know it kind of fits with the black and the black, uh, black, white, and gold, you know, uh, motif. So, and it's very silly, which is the most important thing with hats and uh, the Souls games. I don't know. My Dark Souls three play. Somebody has been telling me to judge NPCs by how good the hat is. Right. <laughs> yeah, and and in all seriousness, you know, uh, the whole thing about hats and uh, Dark Souls two and everything. For some reason, it's like while well, a lot of armor pieces have a couple of uh, useful things to them. 
like uh, str like every piece of Strayed's uh, armor, I believe, increases, uh, or, the, or like the Lion Mage set increases uh, casting speed. Uh, for almost every hat has some benefit to it. Well, not uh, almost every. I'd say about probably about half the hats have some benefit to them, like a uh, mental stats or like I think the peasant hat gives you faith and things like that. It's it's really weird, you know how how important hats are in Dark Souls too. I still think that they looked at uh, Team Fortress Two and thought hats. Hats. That's what that's what those Americans want, right? Hats. <laughs> And I guess they wouldn't be wrong, you know. <laughs> okay, you know, if they if they if they introduced a DLC that was just Dark Souls fashion designer. Oh, you know, you know, Bar you know Barbie, uh, yeah. Barbie Dark Souls people right. people would buy it. You know, it was literally just dress up. Right. You know, Dark Souls dress up. Mm -hmm. Which I'm imagining with all of the Barbie spinoff games and actual, you know, uh, Barbie Dark Souls. <laughs> 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 Here's one of the, here's one of the while well, you're all ruminating on that one. <laughs> here's one of the here's one of the big differences in Scholar, something I really like, and they go and of course they do, they do it a lot more in Dark Souls Three, is having actual patrolling enemies that you have to if you if you want to get the most out of fighting them, you have to kind of wait a little bit on their patrol routes and like attack one of them while the other one is facing away from you. Otherwise, they'll get dogpiled by all of them at once if you just try to rush in. And it's it's really neat, and I don't think Dark Souls One ever really did that. Oh, only in a few, not really patrolling, but I mean, there are some things like the Boulder Knights in the church. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, if you attack, if you did a range attack on the one closer to you, they'd all they'd all dogpile you. Mm -hmm. The one you wanted to attack was the middle one, because for some reason his mate wouldn't go and follow him as he ran past, going, "Who's just attacked me?" Right. Oh man, Bob got shot in the head with an arrow again. But screw that guy. So <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and this is an easy chest to miss, uh, especially your first time through. It's kind of tucked in behind the the stalactites. Oh, it's like mites. Might reach. Might reach the ceiling. That, might might that reach the ceiling. Hold on right. tight to the ceiling. There we go. <laughs> Something like that. All right, all right. In the comments, what's your favorite demonic? To remember the uh, stalactites, stalagmites. <laughs> I got some bad intel on this one. I had heard that Solapes would kill these guys because they were hollow, and I guess they're not, actually, so I should probably... So go go back and pretend I didn't say hollow when I referred to them. Because, yeah, it, it, they, if they were hollow, they would have been fried by Solapes, and it didn't work. So, I, I guess, what, whatever they are, it's not bad. They're not actually hollow. Mm -hmm. Poor guys, I guess, yeah, they're just, you know, something happened to them. Oh, well, they're dead now, so. <laughs> uh, and that's another one that's a pretty easy, it's pretty much a, uh, uh, you know, fish in a barrel scenario, because as long as you leave the Milfinito, Milfinito alive, and uh, that'd, be a, that'd be a perfect time for that you monster message if you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, are there people who actually kill the Milfinito? Uh, you know. I, 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 but there's people that'll do anything in the Souls game, so I would... <laughs> I mean, there's people who kill Priscilla. Oh, <laughs> but <laughs> I just, I just wanted her. I uh, just wanted the dagger. Because <laughs> I love how made they... from her soul. No, her, the dagger is from her tail. The scut, tail, the right. size is from her soul. I, I, I got a. Um, I, I didn't go back and verify it, but apparently people were saying that uh, that if you like never rest at that first bonfire in the painted world, you can still cut her tail and homeward out or die, and it should still work. And I, I didn't verify that, but. Mm, no, if you homeward out or die, it still wakes you up at that bonfire. Oh, even if you don't actually touch it. Yeah. Oh. Well, Once you're in the painted world, you're stuck until you go out the other end. Gotcha. Yeah, and Dark Souls Two never really does anything uh, like that, as far as I know. Uh, no, the, yeah. the closest is the giant memories, which we're closing in on now. Anyway, mm. welcome to part two of the shrine. Yes. Oh my where gosh. Where if this if is... you if for some bizarre reason you're refusing to use a bow, you are going to have a miserable time. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you've got you basically have the the one two uh, punch of long range, very accurate uh, enemies that do uh, magic damage, which a lot of people will be if you're running around in your in your knight armor or you're running around in no armor to keep up your your roll distance and uh, stamina, then uh, yeah, they do a, do a pretty large amount of damage. And as you just saw in the original version, those projectiles will turn on a dime to make sure they hit you. 
it, it is it is really nasty. One of the first patches uh, actually you know, kind of uh, it, uh, basically t uh, tamped down on the speed and homing only a little bit. You know, it was overstated how much it was nerfed. They're still pretty they're still pretty tough to deal with. Yeah. And this this is another zone where if you want an easy time to it, what you need is a great bow and a hawk ring. Mm -hmm. Because the stand-up time on these guys is just about synced with the draw time on the great bow. Yup. <laughs> yeah, when when uh, when Mog mentioned at the end of the uh, Train Lake video about how you know she didn't have too hard of a time in the Shrine of Imana, I figured that's what that's what she had done. But like but like she said, she was still sticking with the 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 the, the cute little uh, parasol uh, crossbow. I'm also wondering if you had infused it with uh, with magic. If, uh, if it would protect better against their spells when you blocked, then you can infuse oh, it back to something else when you were done. That would be interesting. No, I didn't mm -hmm. try that. I forgot that infusing shields upsets, ups that resistance. Right. Yeah, it's, I guess it kind of depends on how, the, on how they treat it. It's like the Disc Chime, for example, is treated as a you know, weapon and not a shield properly, or, 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 a, or a catalyst and not a shield. So you can't actually do a lot of the things to benefit it that you know, that you otherwise could if it was an actual shield. I guess stability never goes up, for example. No. It's cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I, do, I just love this area with these sort of luminescent blue flowers and... Uh... Yeah, I was just going to say that while, while I'm trying to find the Pharaoh's Lockstone, <laughs> that it reminds me a lot of... What's that, what's that level in Skyrim? Um, uh, oh, the Black is Reach it the big something? underground city? Yeah, mm -hmm. with the artificial sun. Yeah, they kind of do something like that, right? They have the luminescent uh, flowers everywhere to kind of. Cause I, well, I say flowers; it's more like algae, I guess, in that case. But yeah, kind of, yeah, so it's, it's a very cool way of having, of having your your lighting to, for contrast and everything, while still having what? a. Hmm? What did you pick up there? That is the helix halberd. It is a. Uh. Yeah, did you did you get that? I don't remember. No, I I missed that. Okay, yeah. The the deal with that one is that it, it, it a typical halberd kind of has some it leans a little more on the spear uh, move sets, but its R two moves will pop out a a uh, spear point in addition to the kind of flanged, uh, you know the the I guess V shaped you know head, and it's possible to hit with uh, with all three you know blades at the same time to do double the usual damage. Oh, nice. So, but so basically, if if you really like the if you're one of those weirdos that really like the direct hit mechanics on halberds in this game, that is a weapon for you. That just doubles down on it. It's even worse if you don't get it to trigger, and it's even better if you do. <laughs> and showing off on sniping the priestesses again. I, you can do something similar with with lightning spears and the binoculars because they don't have a maximum range the way that other spells do. And of course, since they're Oh, go ahead. I have never once got sniping with binoculars to work. <laughs> you know, I, I line up dead center and nothing ever happens. It always <laughs> goes off. Right. Yeah, it, it is. There is slightly uh, yeah off depending on which hand you're using. You have to kind of learn to account for that. Oh, this guy is new in Scala. Mm -hmm. One of the old knights. And he is a jerk. Uh, they put they they had to put a hammer brother here. The one saving grace is that, like, he, he is not a very reliable bodyguard to the poor uh, priestesses here because he won't aggro until you get, like, you know. I mean, it's, it's not quite uh, Dark Souls he, 1 and Orlando Sentinel range, but it's pretty close. <laughs> he, he's not he's not a bodyguard of the priestesses. He's trying to stop you from following Be uh, Velstat. Velstat? Vengal? Yeah. Uh, Vel the Velstat. Vendrick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there too he's, many to stop, he's not yeah. there for the priestesses. He's there to stop you following Vendrick. Interesting. That's a thought. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. It's like, yeah, the, the Archdrake uh, cult is just there doing its own thing. And then in Scholar, you've got, yeah, the knight and the... There's a dragon rider out, up here, too, that I guess are protecting the uh, the throne. He, yeah, he, basically. The dragon rider they added, because the thing is, in the original game, you could just ignore that little door. And that little door is actually very important. Mm -hmm. It's got a chair behind it. <laughs> yep, throne number three. <laughs> um, it's also got a uh, what's his name, Vendrick stuff. If you mm -hmm. want, you know, if you want his armor. Right. Yeah, I, I I've only gotten that once because yeah, my first couple times playing the game, I never even saw that the the route there, because in OG Dark Souls two, there isn't any indication of it. 
there's like a slightly raised uh, set of stairs and a and a walkway uh, to the door there in the distance, and that's it. You know, there's no enemies there. There's no there's no there's none of those uh, the, the luminescent uh, plants or anything to call your attention to it. Then you you have somebody that's not very observant like me in the first place, and there you go. <laughs> And with that one done, we've got and scholar is it's kind of it's kind of interesting, I guess, to account for the fact that the individual that individually the priestesses aren't as dangerous, since it's easier to dodge the uh, the spells and everything. They put more, they put more of them in in scholar. And some of them also have a really annoying party trick of doing a heal spell. Yeah. Um, so if you don't, what I found with that is um, if you aren't shooting the healing one, you get one of them down. To one shot away from death, at which point the healer notices mm -hmm. and heals them. Right. And, and the got... healer one is almost always further back, so it's harder to snipe. Right, exactly. Yeah, the, and uh, and she casts those, I think it's uh, Blessed Sunlight is the name of the miracle, that will heal all allies for all, pretty much all their health in a very large range. So yeah, if you see a priestess in the, in the background that doesn't have a weapon or doesn't have a staff, uh, shoot, you know, it is, it's, it's like D&D, &D, uh, gank the mage. <laughs> and Shadowrun, geek the mage. Geek the mage, yep. I guess geek the healer in this case, because they're all mages, you know. <laughs> True. Yeah. Like I, I guess, uh, PvP oh, in Guild Wars, gank the monk. The monk, right. Uh, what's what's the deal with them? I've never, I've never, they're I've, the I've healing known. class. Ah, yep, yep. So there you go. You can also uh, go around the site here. Uh, which is what uh, what Mog's doing. There's another priestess, and and she might only be facing this way in Scholar. I don't think I got shot at heading that way in the in the original. But yeah, you, you, if you headed through that way, you will eventually deal with a couple of those uh, the bleeding uh, lizard guys, and you can work your way around, and it will the the paths will eventually come together in a shallow water area that you know to the right is some goodies, and to the left is that house that that we that we just saw before we cut. Which is probably your, it's probably your your kind of um, you know checkpoint you know place of place of uh, refuge before you move on to the second half of of the worst part of the shrine. <laughs> yeah, and uh, was it there's there's a really narrow path where you have to keep swapping which side of the pillars you walk on to make it across safely. Right. Yeah, um, that's that's got some good good goodies down it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the the spots where you'd really be tempted to use a use a torch and kind of mercifully they don't put too many of the lizard guys there. You know, it, it definitely would have been a nasty trick to yeah and kind of encourage you to use the uh, to use the torch then and then like line it with you know sleeping you know guys that'll all pop up and dogpile you. <laughs> There's still and a couple. Suddenly a cyclops. Yeah, yeah, another one of those uh, the hippo cyclops ogre things. But you know, we'll be dealing with him in, in my footage uh, for Mog after she basically cleared a route to that, uh, to that passageway we were talking about earlier. Oh, one more priestess. This, this is also new in, in Scholar. Uh, she, she wasn't there in that little uh, corridor in the original. And she, her main purpose is to shoot you in the back if you don't go and have a look. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff. Like, uh, there's a, um, a, a, a WordPress, I think it was WordPress, a site I was looking at. That kind of has had compared some of the differences between uh, Scholar, and their 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 uh, their line on Shrine of Amana was uh, yeah basically you know more priestesses to make the area one hundred percent more BS. <laughs> it's like yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I don't know. I I, said, I think it's because you know I've, I've I've always viewed ranged weapons as a totally natural thing to use in the games. Right, right. I've never found the shrine that bad. <laughs> like, oh, I think, good shot. Thank you. I think you're exactly right on on the whole uh, Ibushido thing, though. It's like if you're not mailing it, you're doing it wrong, and this is the this is the area to punish you for trying that. It's like if you have not diversified your portfolio beyond beyond poking things with pointed things, you know, you're you're yeah, like you said, you're gonna have a bad time with it. <laughs> uh, and that was yeah, that was just you know kind of uh, syncing up the the footage there. That's the way to that uh, to that building, and then we're going back to for Mog for a little bit. To deal with and the yeah, dragon, rider, the dragon rider guarding mm. Ven, uh, Vendrix chair. Yeah, too many V's. That's <laughs> too many V's. Vendrix, Vengal, Velstat. Mm. There might even be another one. I'm not. I can't remember now. But 
of course, and of course, Vinland. Like we got that confused uh, earlier. <clears throat> but yeah, the uh, the Dragon Rider is. I think there's another one in in the Undead Crypt, and both of them are one time kind of mid boss enemies. That uh, and the first time I saw one you know, when when my brother was playing a scholar, that was our first experience with it. I thought that oh, that they're they're both going to drop uh, souls. So you can get all four of their weapons in one playthrough, but but no, you no, know, I don't. you can only get two Dragon Rider weapons for on a place on a single playthrough. I mean, obviously you can get them more if you are aesthetic, but right. Yeah, and of course, but but really, it's like you know, who who would actually want to to get all? Well, I, I guess if you're going magic, you might want to get all of them as a curiosity. You know, the end well, of the, the bow shield. is quite nice to be honest. The bow is very good. Yeah, it's kind of that. Uh, you know, we mentioned with the, the like a Mastodon halberd that Dark Souls Two has a lot of kind of in between weapons. You know, things that are, you know, they're like in between the classes of different ones. Like that's a, you know, a halberd that's more strength based. You know, has a lot of poise damage and everything. Whereas, yeah, they have the dragon rider, the dragon rider bow is kind of like that. It's right in between regular bows and great bows. It takes up more stamina, does more damage, but doesn't have the the long draw time and uh, and the knockdown that a great bow does. 